You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. A sensational frangipan tart recipe that's boozy and all peachy, and I wish things were as peachy for me as they are for this French almond tart classic, but things aren't peachy for me, because I've just been kicked out of me house. But more on that later, because we have to do a simple pate sucre tart base pie crust type thingy, otherwise the frangipan filling won't have anywhere stable to live. Just like me. So I went in with 200 grams of all-purpose flour, 50 grams of sugar and a pinch of salt, I blitzed it up. I added 100 grams of softened butter and a tablespoon of lemon juice and I've blitzed all that up to a breadcrumb texture and put one or two egg yolks in next and uh, a splash of water to finish and that would be one or two tablespoons depending on how much egg yolk you put in. You could also use just one whole egg. And then if you're using a machine like I am, just blitz it very, very slowly at this point to bring it together. You can also do this pastry with your hands, of course. But I'm using a machine here because luckily I managed to fit mine in my ten-year-old Hyundai before I got out of Dodge and onto pastures new. And a little need has brought this dough together and I'm going to rest this in the fridge for about 30 minutes before rolling it out. And that will help us to prevent the pastry from shrinking when we bake it as the gluten in the dough there has had a chance to relax. So with a generous dusting of flour, I'm going to roll this out and keep turning it as you roll and add a bit more flour as you go if you need to. You can even flip the door, just like my wife flipped the other day and gave me my marching orders. And roll the pastry just big enough to go in your pan because we don't want it too thin before folding it up and plonking it in. And don't worry if you have a disaster at this point, as this pastry is pretty forgiving. Just take a bit of time to tidy it up with your hands and make it look all neat. And once you're happy with that, you can take off the excess around the edges with your rolling pin or a sharp knife, or you could even use some scissors. And we do want to prick this with a fork now to stop it from puffing up too much as it bakes, but don't go all the way through with your fork. And we're going to blind bake this now in a fan-assisted oven at 160 degrees Celsius, 320 Fahrenheit, and if your oven doesn't have a fan, crank up the temperature a little bit to compensate. And I like to almost fully cook my pastry to avoid a soggy bottom, so I've given this 35 minutes. And when it comes out and you've cleared the field, put it back in the oven for 5 minutes to dry out the top, but be careful that it doesn't puff up in there. You will need to gently press on it if it does puff up a little, but don't use your hand or you'll get your fingers burnt, just like I did in my long-term relationship. Use the back of a spoon or your divorce papers, or the tenancy agreement of the high-rise bedsit you have to move into at short notice, or something like that. And I've brushed the fully cooled base with some beaten egg white before cranking the oven on again and setting the egg white for 7-8 to eight minutes at about 160 again. And that has given me this lovely, fully baked, sealed, pie crust pastry base ready for the filling. And once it's fully cooled again, we can go ahead and spread the base with apricot jam. I sieved the apricot jam to make it smooth, but you don't really have to do that. And hey, I appreciate that a lot of time is wasted waiting for this crust to cool through all the different processes I've taken you through but that will ensure you have the best possible base for this frangipan tart. And it was no problem for me this week because I had lots of time on my hands, you know, time to go through everything that happened in my head and time to ponder the disintegration of my life as I know it. But never mind that because I'm making this delightful frangipan tart for you now, so the dark clouds of loss are already slowly clearing. And I've brought some peaches in now. Now these are tin peaches. And when I picked these up in the supermarket last week, the wife goes, Oh, peaches, do you think I'm peachy? And I said, No, not really. And that's what started our inevitable demise. Because then she cracked me over the back of the head with a tin of Quality Street she'd picked up in aisle four and was already munching on. And that's domestic violence, in my humble opinion, even if it didn't happen in a domestic setting. But let me give you the filling recipe now before you lot crack me over the head as well. And the dry ingredients there were 100 grams of all-purpose flour, a good pinch of salt and 200 grams of ground almonds. And now I've got a separate bigger bowl, which I've put 125 grams of sugar and 150 grams of softened butter into. And I'm creaming those two together. And you can use vanilla sugar here. And I have a recipe in the description for my homemade vanilla sugar. But you can put your own vanilla in at this point, vanilla essence or vanilla extract if you like. And once the cream's butter and sugar has turned a very light colour, you'll know that it's ready. And I'm just bringing this together here now in readiness for our wet ingredients. And I'm starting with two large eggs and one egg yolk here. And we'll incorporate these in one at a time now. 
with the help of a tablespoon of the dry ingredients each time. And you'll notice that I didn't stir the dry ingredients because I only want the almonds going in at this point while I'm thrashing this around. Because beating any flour in like this will affect the texture of the finished tart, and not in a good way really. And mixing our eggs in one at a time with a tablespoon of the almonds will prevent the mix from potentially splitting, so I do recommend you do it this way, and just repeat the process each time until everything is running smoothly. And I do wish things were running smoothly for me at the moment, but I suppose moving into a bedsit on the 8th floor of a high-rise building where the lifts don't work is an opportunity for a fresh start, you know. Endless possibilities, you know, like depression and catastrophic collapse of self-esteem. Maybe I'll turn to alcohol, because when did alcohol ever cause anyone any problems? In fact, yeah, you know what? Let's do that straight away with my secret ingredient for this peach frangipan tart, and that's 150 millilitres of amaretto. Lovely and fancy, this almond liqueur. Ooh, and do you know what? I'm just going to put a tablespoon of lemon juice in this mix here before I forget. And I'm going to give my dry ingredients a good stir before we add them to the butter, sugar, egg concoction. And I like stirring it up. I told the mother-in-law that she was a pinch-faced boar with sausage fingers when she was helping my wife throw all my belongings into the street. I would have tried to stop them, like, but uh, they can both fight me. So anyway, I'm adding the dry ingredients in now with the amaretto, and I'm doing that in two stages, so half of each. And once the first half has gone in, we can gently bring it together with more stirring. I mean, she is a pinch-faced ball with sausage fingers, a voice like Brian Adams and hair like a shattered bread crate. Of course she was going to take her daughter's side. I feel sorry for her husband. He's been walking around for the last 30 years with the air of a man who's had his testicles chopped off. I don't think he's spoken a word since the millennium, the poor fella. But we have to get this mix all sorted out now because we can't allow ourselves to get too distracted by abusive tattooed matriarchs. And if you don't want to put alcohol in this tart, you can just add 150 millilitres of whole milk instead. You won't get the same great almondy flavour, but adding some almond essence in as well will replace at least some of what you lose by omitting the amaretto. Some people may be wary of the alcohol, especially if serving for kids, but the amounts are so small I don't really see a problem with it. But it's up to you, and this tart will still be great with milk. And instead of just pouring the filling directly into the pan, I'm going to spoon it on gently. We don't want the apricot jam being pushed out to the sides when we put the filling in. So just be a little bit careful here, and the mix is quite thick and won't settle on its own. So you will have to go in and spread it out evenly making sure that you go right up to the sides of the tart. I'm using an offset spatula here, but a knife will work just as well, I suppose. And our peaches are going to go on top of this flattened out filling mix, and I'm bringing the peaches in, and just a quick word on the peaches. I've bought the half peaches in tins rather than sliced peaches. These half peaches will look a lot nicer. They will hold their brighter colour a lot better than the thinly sliced peaches that you can buy. And when it's baked as well, they'll also look a lot better. So I do recommend buying half peaches rather than sliced peaches for this. I also cut the half peaches into half again because they just fit on the tart better. And the full half peach can be a little bit too heavy for the filling and it'll, it'll sink down a little bit too much as the tart bakes. And these peaches are pretty slippery, so I was like, faffing on a lot there trying to get them on. But I got them on in the end. And now I'm going to brush them in the syrup that they came in on top because... When they bake, they can dry out a little bit too much, get a bit wrinkled, you know. So this step will ensure a better look and finish. And if you don't have the syrup, just mix some sugar and water together to make a simple syrup and use that instead. And to finish, just sprinkle with some sliced almonds and uh, they will toast nicely on top there. And we can bake this tart on a baking tray at the bottom of the oven at 175 degrees Celsius, and that's about 350 Fahrenheit. I don't have the fan on in my oven, and this will take around... 30 to 40 minutes and when it's done it will have puffed up slightly and have a light golden colour on top just like this here. It will bounce back slightly when pressed on top and the old toothpick test will ensure that this is cooked and that's come out clean so we are good to go. So I got a little bit more apricot jam, mixed it with a little bit of water to thin it out a little and I'm just going to brush the top of the tart now while it's still warm but not hot and that will give us a glossy shiny finish to this spectacular boozy frangipan tart and this is a cracking showstopper dessert to serve in your happy homes well at least i hope they're happy because uh, even though they say misery loves company i don't tend to agree with that aphorism so i hope you're all having a lovely time with your families
Just giving you a lovely close-up here. That's glistening. Absolutely glistening. So let's serve it up on a plate there in lieu of better times ahead. And I'm just going to go in now and cut a little piece of this. And I just couldn't resist popping this in my mouth. And even though I've had this loads, it still surprises me how good it is. Mmm. God damn. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Boozy peach frangipan tart, enough to put a smile on even the most downbeat and domestically unstable. And I'll see you next time if I can make the rent on my new place. Take care of yourselves. Terra.